Hi, my name is Stephen Tronicek, and I'm with HorrorOrigins.com. We are a horror website where you can find articles, interviews, and our very own film and screenplay festival. Today, I'm talking with Peter Hatch of the YouTube channel Deformed Lunchbox, which has this these wonderful, really funny, really like horrific, just great little YouTube, um, little short films on there. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about some of this stuff. So um, uh, I like to start with the question as to uh, what got you into horror, you know, that initial spark, because it, uh, it lays a good, uh, a good base for, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like horror is one of those things where uh, it's kind of like um, yeah, you're born either to like it or you're born to hate it. And I just remember being a little kid at the, the video rental store before Blockbuster was popular. And I remember just looking in the aisles of all the, the covers of the movies that I wasn't allowed to rent. And I think that's where it, where it started. Um, but as far as making horror movies, I, I didn't really get into film thinking I would make horror movies. I just started to realize a trend in all the movies I was making were kind of dark and, and dark comedy and really, you know, I don't want to say mean spirited, but there's people dying in them and there's, it's sometimes gory. So I think I just, it was just not as natural as nature. <laughs> um, what is it? I, I agree with you. You know, you're either into it or you're not. And it's like, it does it, does it make you feel, you know, excited or happy or anything like that? Uh, if you see this or, and you know, there's a lot of people where it's like, nope, those covers, they're going to, they would just run the other way immediately. <laughs> I love, I love it. I mean, e either when I watch horror, I'm, I'm like excited and laughing with it, or I'm actually afraid, but either way, I'm feeling something. So I, that's even the worst horror movies can get me, get me going. Right. Just those, those great, um, those great tropes of the genre, those great, you know, there's always going to be some type of blood. There's always going to be these big shadows. There's always going to be some guy randomly screaming or whatever. It's, it's just yeah. a good time. Great time. Yeah, totally. Um, so uh, you're, you're, the channel has a really fun name, Deformed Lunchbox, and uh, most great channel names have a, at least a decent story behind them. So uh, where'd you get Deformed Lunchbox from? Um, it's not that interesting of a story. <laughs> uh, we orig originally, I, was, I wanted to do something with you know, horror short films, and we were going to start a website called Do Not Open the Box. Okay. And you were just going to, it was going to be, we bought, we even bought do not open.tv and all this stuff. So you'd go to do not open the box.com or, or whatever, and you just see a box there and it would just say do not open. And you would just click it and then a short film would just, I just start short horror films and start playing. Um, but I kind of got rid of that idea because I'm not, I'm not really a web guy. I'm more of a film production guy. So we just kind of like settled for the next best, best thing, which was like YouTube and, and online channels. Um, and I think do not open the box just sort of uh, mutated into deformed lunchbox. And at the time, to be honest, at the time, we were just kind of like, oh, yeah, it's good as name as any. Uh, but over the years, it's kind of stuck. And now I'm, I'm really I really like the name. I'm really happy that we just kind of randomly stuck with a cool name because it could have been, you know, you could we could have chosen a really bad name or a name that someone else already had. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but I, I also, I think it works because it um, kind of ties into the, like the variety I like to think that we offer. So you're kind of getting a, like you are literally getting a deformed lunchbox of surprises. You're getting a little bit of short, short, small comedy. You're getting a little bit of meteor horror, you're, but it's kind of that everything in that world of strange and dark. Yeah, definitely. I mean, whenever I saw the name, I was like, Oh man, body horror catches right in mind. Like yeah. that's what immediately popped out to me, or like some like cannibalistic <laughs> feeling. And it's like, well, that's fitting. I mean, yeah. <laughs> David, I love David Cronenberg, so I think that's definitely been an influence. Oh, uh, the David Cronenberg is one of my favorites too. And he's he, he's such a huge influence on a ton of stuff that I do as well. Absolutely, and I. Uh, it's exciting to meet people who are like on that same wavelength of uh, body horror is just the best. What's your favorite uh, David Cronenberg film? Hey, I'm the interviewer, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking with you. Um, you know, I, I, I feel kind of bad to say that I think his most mainstream, The Fly, is his best film. It's yeah. such a perfect script. 
and such so well produced. Um, I watched, but, uh, it, I watched it recently again, and it, it held up. But uh, I'm I'm really partial to Crash as well. <laughs> I haven't seen that since I was a kid. Oddly enough, uh, I really um, like I really like Videodrome myself. Yeah. And the Brood, and uh, what's that one with Jeremy Irons? Uh, and he's the twin. Uh, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I, yeah, I love those. Uh, the Brood, especially. I'm a big uh, Oliver Reed, just coming yeah. in at, on just the biggest hot streak in that movie. Just very intense. The movie, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So you know, uh, the the ch films on your channel they tend to lean towards horror and comedy as a mesh and you know a lot of people talk about how horror and comedy are very similar um mm -hmm. uh, how do how do you go about blending those two genres um i feel like someone could write probably a book on mixing horror and comedy together uh because there's so many ways to do it and it can be done i feel like it can done, be done the wrong way too where it's uh both sides are fighting with each other or taking away from each other so i think for us we kind of try to find the comedy in in the horror if that makes sense like we don't try to turn it into a comedy so i think we're going for more of that like wow this is so disturbing i can't help but chuckle comedy uh rather than the uh, like rather than uh presenting the movies as if they are comedies or uh, as if they are jokes like we we keep a very straight face when we do something that might be so surreal someone might laugh but i, I love seeing in the comments pe some people will say wow i found that really scary i found that really disturbing and then some people will say that's not scary this is funny uh this why are you calling this a horror this should be a comedy so i kind of like that we get both total sides of that yeah i i absolutely agree with you there um toast in particular stuck out to me um with the lead actor is so so wonderful in that and He's so great. funny <laughs> but it, it is it is horrific i mean it's it's just very surreal to the point yeah i i really enjoyed that one yeah i, um, I like to think of some some of our uh surrealism as kind of like a david lynch light where it's not so heavy and wrapped up in in subtext that you're confused by it but it is definitely surreal but i like to think that's a little more graspable for like your common day audience Right, right, right. It's not like, you know, the Red Room and all those guys, the Black Lodge and all those guys like talking weird. It's, hey, this guy's hand turned into a piece of toast. And he cool. ate it, yeah. yeah maybe, he ate the hand. maybe he's not, but um, it's still a little, I do think it's a little bit grounded. So I try, <laughs> I try. I mean, the, I, what I took away from a lot of the shorts is that I, I, I think like, the overall vibe was always good. So, you know, you just go with it, man. <laughs> just really funny, really uh, entertaining. Um, so I love independent set stories. Um, I, you know, having been on independent sets and, you know, that stuff like that, set stories are always really entertaining, especially on horror movies where like crazy stuff is going down. So um, what what's, what's the best set story you can think of? Um... I mean, you know, I saw your question when you said this to me, and I I couldn't really think of anything that spectacular. I like to think that uh, when we do a shoot, it's it's pretty smooth. <laughs> it's pretty planned. Like, there's not usually like a hail mary or anything too crazy. And uh, and if there's like a problem, it's usually just trying to get over it. But I think the most the I mean, the funniest story I have off the top of my head is the re most recent film we did that's actually not released yet. Mm -hmm. um we uh we're trying to get into festivals and all that but um there's an old really old woman in it and we had to do a scene where she was like up on a cliff so we couldn't expect her to climb up on this cliff based on where it is so i, I basically took her her dress and and i took her jacket and i took a, a got a black wig and i i was her for that shot so wow. You can't tell, but I'm actually, I'm acting as a, you know, 65, 70 year old woman for one quick shot. It's not noticeable, but that's you know, <laughs> it's, it's those type of intuitive, you know, things that you just have to do. <laughs> I, I was just, you know, if the shot is wide enough, you can't tell. <laughs> so that's, that's what I knew. That's with a lot of things, actually, like, especially dialogue, you know, oh, yeah. if, if the shot's wide enough, then, uh, just record it later. It's fine. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can do with extreme wides that I'm yeah. you just need a really great location. That's the hard part. Um, so there, there are some fun performances in your films, I think, especially the guy in Toast, um, the five minute dating 
uh, guy is really funny too, I thought. Yeah. Um, what's the approach with working with actors, really? Um, I don't know if I have like really narrowed it down to approach. I think for me, like doing lots of takes and having lots of time for performance. I, I know on a lot of indie projects, they're really rushed. But I think you should be at least, get, if you're setting up all these lights and all the art, you should at least give your actor four or five takes, uh, if not more. Uh, and I, I like kind of, at least I like to go into it without giving them, giving them very little direction, seeing what they do, and then kind of shape what they do into a certain place. But uh, I'm, I'm an editor first, so I'm, I'm usually thinking about the edit as the movie, you know? So I'm usually just looking for those little parts. And I mean, we have had instances where talent come out and we're like, okay, it's not as strong as we hoped. So let's just, let's just take it in a different way in the edit that can kind of work around or work to their strengths. Like you'll notice in a lot of our shorts, you'll have the kind of shots where they're just holding or the camera's like slowly zooming in on a creepy face. Um, there was one in, in Sharpener. I don't know if you've watched Sharpener, the pencil sharpener one. The, the end shot is actually, I mean, she was a great actor, but um, the end shot is just like, it's actually just looping forward and backwards as it's zooming in. So it's, it's not even really, it's like a totally manipulated performance <laughs> to, look, to look weird, right? Cause she's kind of just smiling and shaking, but she not, she's not actually doing that. Oh, um, so I think I don't I don't know if I have an exact answer for you, uh, but maybe I, I think it's just having the time and the takes and also just thinking about the edit and what you need for the edit. No, I mean, that's a perfect answer. I mean, because I, I think that a lot of um, horror directors and a lot of directors in general, you know, they they want to exert that type of control over mm -hmm. the performance and the actors. And it's like once you get there that's not happening <laughs> yeah i mean if you over things too uh if you over direct their head their heads too, maybe too in a technical place of where do i land where do i look where do i think uh and sometimes you just want to roll the camera and say just just go for it uh it's, that's sometimes the best the best stuff yeah absolutely absolutely um another thing i really enjoyed about the films is the uh the vfx that you have the makeup effects other things like that and uh, I just wanted to ask about your philosophy towards practical and digital and just like your ideas going into doing practical VFX in your films. Um, well, we almost have no VFX in the films. It's okay. all special effects. Oh, special I mean, effects, right, right. The difference. Yeah. Uh, very little of it is uh, visual, like digital After Effects post-production. There's a little bit of that, but that's usually to hide something, mm -hmm. like removing a blink or something weird or changing the color of a curtain or something but uh i'm really heavy on special effects mostly because i understand that uh we don't really have the budgets to even even come close to uh what uh, uh, movies the visual effects people are used to seeing so it's kind of like with visual effects like well do you have a million dollars for it if you don't it's not going to look as good so i, I think in my mind special effects is always going to be key until maybe there is that huge budget i mean dreaming here but even then i still think use special effects when and where you can mm -hmm. uh, i don't remember who said it. i think it was like james cameron or something said that it's not using it's not the effects or special effects it's mixing them together at the right way like using the special effects when you can using the effects when you can mixing them when you can uh, best example terminator 2 how uh it was a t1000 sometimes the the, the gunshot wounds are like mm -hmm. a physical metal plate in the close-ups but on some different shots on maybe like a little bit wider shots where they couldn't use uh, metal practical effects, they use uh, CG. So right, anyway, right. The special effects, I, I put a lot of effort into that. Like the art department and what goes in front of the camera, I, I think is one of, the, one of the most important parts. And one of the things that a lot of indie films don't, don't factor in as much. Um, but yeah, it's all, about, it's all about those special effects. And I mean, some, it's, to me, it's really just about setting up that day or two beforehand where you can test them um, like for the hand and toast for example like you know we had to like it's very jerry-rigged together like we don't have a special effects person or even an art person uh and it's really just a barbecue skewer going through a dollar store halloween prop into a piece of toast and then when he bites it the the blood the jam is already in his mouth and we yeah we use jam a lot for blood <laughs> so that's i was about to ask um what type of sticky thing do you use for all the blood <laughs> honestly <laughs> raspberry jam raspberry jam <laughs> yeah <laughs> make sure it's not it's uh has the chunks in it though too like if you get the strawberry raspberry jam you can't get the the pureed stuff it won't work 
right you gotta have the, all those uh fruit pieces because then it'll look just just disgusting totally yeah I, I also have a big jug of party blood that i order on uh, amazon like every couple couple months when i run out so yeah well yeah um so um do you have anything longer in the works any features or anything like that uh yeah actually funny you should ask that because just today just a few hours ago uh what we did as on our channel we launched uh what i called deform lunchbox um volume zero <laughs> which is like a 25 minute like short anthology kind of episode of about about 10 or 11 of our short films put together oh, okay so it's we're treating that like a prototype to for a an episodic series so we're trying to use that to try to get some interest and maybe get some people on Patreon and 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 um, hopefully launching that into a, a full on 10 episode series. Like we've written the whole series. We've got over a hundred more shorts to go written. Um, so yes, that's, that's, that's a plan. We really, I, I really like the short format. Like I do have a couple long format stories, but I think for now with like Deform Lunchbox and what we're doing, we're gonna embrace that short format of films. And we're gonna just try to get our, our into the anthology space where we're doing you know, either a feature length anthology of shorts, or we're hopefully gonna get this series off the ground where we're doing like a 10 episode series of 10 shorts, 10 deform shorts per episode. So that's kind of our goal right now. So I love anthology horror. I love short horror. I think it's a great genre. Did you see that they announced the new VHS to like, was it today or yesterday? There's like a new VHS 94 or something like that. But wait, they had one, two, and then they have a third spinoff did have a third one yeah okay but I, I number three i think that they just announced the new one um so that should be interesting <laughs> totally yeah i mean i also really like like abcs of death um and i like to think that with our content it kind of bleeds into weirdo dark drama and stuff so i like any anthology i can get i mean i even like that um what's it called the love and love death and robots yeah yeah um that's really cool um I mean, Tales from the Crypt is the classic, right? Um, and he, even something like uh, Black Mirror, which I really like. Right, is right. Kind of anthological in that every episode is it's completely refresh on the story. Um, so I, I, love the, I love the idea to refresh a story every time like that. So um, I like to end off these interviews with the simple question of off, right off the top of your head, just no real thought about it. What is one horror movie you'd recommend to everybody? Just okay. Well, I'm gonna. I, I'm sure people have said all the classics on here, so I'm gonna recommend a recent one. Uh, I saw Saint Maud. Oh, it's so good. Yes, yeah, so I think that's the best horror movie I've seen this year. I just saw uh, Quiet Place Two. Mm -hmm. uh, really good, but uh, I don't know. Saint Maud really very like interesting and kind of subtext and. I love I love the kind of horror that can be grounded in like human psychology, and you can actually take a story away from it that's not supernatural at all. Mm -hmm. Like it's really just psychology, but just the cinematography was wonderful. The sound, the editing, the, the I, honestly, if it was, I know it won't be, but I feel like it could be nominated for Academy Awards. I would, I would, I mean, I would personally hope so because it is such an excellent film, uh, but. Welcome to horror and the exactly. Academy Awards. Welcome to, horror, also welcome to like early in the year movies, right? Like movies that come out in the first uh, four or five months don't even get remembered. They're not going to get remembered. You're right. Totally. But I, I think, so. yeah, the same odd was really, really awesome. Really mm -hmm. great. I totally agree. I mean, um, something that always sticks with me on that film is um, the way that the lighter is the sound motif is set up through the first act, how it just like mm -hmm. keeps popping and keeps popping up. And it's like, man, you really just went in there like granular stuff. And it is just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sound design, the sound design was, was awesome. I mean, yeah, it was- People was did crazy. not, <laughs> the people in my theater did not enjoy the final shot of the movie though. No, oh, that was- man. They were so mad. Now, see, that final shot made me start laughing. Like I, 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 out of like a curious, uncomfortable laughter. So I don't, <laughs> I knew, I know something's good when it gets me to laugh like that, so. <laughs> Um, did you watch uh, the, the new Conjuring movie? I haven't seen it. No, I haven't gotten to the kit okay. for that one yet. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing. Still, hmm. still okay, but not as good as the, the first one or the second one. You know, I, I have kind of a weird Conjuring take. I, I like, I, I'm not as hot on the first one, but I really like the second one. Um, okay, that's yeah. very interesting. 
I mean, yeah. the second one is, I guess, a bit more unique, right? Mm -hmm. And the first one, I, I feel like the first one's kind of like that quintessential all American spook house movie. So I guess I give it more credit for not being as unique. Um, but yeah, they're, I think they're both great. They're both really good. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Well, right. So my name's been Stephen Tronichek and I'm with Horrorigins.com again. We were a horror website that where you can find articles, interviews, and our very own film and screenplay festival. I have been talking with Peter Hatch of the YouTube channel, Deformed Lunchbox. Thank you again so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. And um, where can people find you before we go? Uh, they can find us all over. They can just Google Deformed Lunchbox. Um, I hope there's not another Deformed Lunchbox out there. That'd be really... <laughs> <laughs> that <was nerfy. laughs> so yeah just yeah. YouTube, youtube or facebook uh we have twitter we have patreon we've got vimeo we've got uh, instagram i probably said it already excellent excellent oh. and you can and uh you guys can find me on twitter at at s-t-r-o-n-i-c-e-k um yeah all right uh thank you so much again and see you later